welcome to the mini games module of the Living Epic Courses. And in this module, I'm going to be talking about something that I think is um, at least uh, amusingly described as mini games, both in Homeric Epic and in video games. Although in this case, as uh, not really all that often, the analogy is coming from the video games into the epic. Um, and so minigames is not a term you're going to hear other classicists using for anything that happens in Homeric Epic. But the idea is that um, it's possible within Epic and within video games to reflect in what, we, what might be called a kind of miniature way on what's going on. So this is kind of in addition to what we see in such kind of grandiose mise en abime as what happens when Odysseus tells his adventures or when Achilles is playing the lyre when the embassy comes to see him in Book 9. This is a little bit lighter, but in a certain way maybe also uh, an insight into what's going on in both um, epic and in games in a, a kind of refracted and different way, which maybe provides additional content, additional ways of looking at what's going on in both of these uh, occasions, the occasion of the bardic occasion in Epic and the occasion of playing the game in games like Club Penguin, which is the game I'm going to be using to illustrate this idea of mini-games. All right, so we're on page 127 of the Lattimore Odyssey, um, and this is a moment in Book 8 when Odysseus is in attendance at the stuff that the Phaeacians do when they're having fun, and they want to show their guest because they can tell he's somebody kind of interesting, how cool it is to be Phaeacian. Um, and so at the end of the athletic activities where Odysseus shows himself to be uh, better than any of the Phaeacians, which of course piques their curiosity even further, um, their king Alcinous says this, For we are not perfect in our boxing nor yet as wrestlers, but we do run lightly on our feet and are excellent seamen, and always the feast is dear to us and the lyre and dances and changes of clothing and our hot baths and beds. I think that's kind of a laugh line. Come then, you who among all the Phaeacians are the best dancers, do your dance, so that our guest, after he comes home to his own people, can tell them how far we surpass all others in our seamanship and the speed of our feet and dancing and singing. Let someone go quickly and bring Demodocus his clear-voiced lyre, which must have been set down somewhere in our palace. Okay, so we're going to have Demodocus, who's the great bard, playing the lyre, which is the great epic instrument, but he's not going to be singing epic. He's going to be singing a dance number, apparently. Um, and so what we have is what I would call a mini-game, a little reflection that has a lot to do with what's going on in the course of the epic occasion, the bardic occasion, but isn't kind of spot on and thereby, by being a little bit different, is going to kind of show us something about the actual epic occasion itself. So godlike Alcinous spoke, and the herald rose up to bring the hollowed lyre out of the king's house. At now stewards of the course stood up, nine and all of them chosen out of the people who on every occasion set in good order the grounds for games, and they smoothed the dancing floor and set right all the ground, and the herald came, bringing with him the clear lyre for Demodocus, who moved into the middle. And about him stood forth young men in the first of their youth, well-trained in dancing, and beat the wonderful dancing floor with their feet. Odysseus gazed on the twinkling of their feet, his heart full of wonder. Demodocus struck the lyre and began singing well the story about the love of Ares and sweet garlanded Aphrodite, how they first lay together in the house of Hephaestus secretly. He gave her much and fouled the marriage and bed of the Lord Hephaestus. Okay, so this is the famous story, and it's the origin of that famous story, often retold, but um, probably an improvisation by an Odyssey bard at some point, of the love of Ares and Aphrodite and how Hephaestus caught them. It's a wonderful story. It's not the kind of thing that you find in Epic. It's not a heroic story, which is why it's interesting. You have Demodocus with the lyre. You have him singing this thing which sounds like a, a great mythological story, but it's different. Um, and so I think when we are able to see within the greater course of the epic something that is kind of mini-game-ish, it makes us think about what it means to be within the bardic occasion, to be somebody who identifies with a hero like Odysseus. 
Um, just as we're going to see uh, in Club Penguin, playing the mini games, which are a huge part of Club Penguin. They're the way you earn coin, which allows you to buy better stuff for your igloo and better clothes to wear around uh, your igloo and outside in the Club Penguin town. Um, that uh, being able to look at your activity within a kind of framework that isn't exactly a mise en beam, it isn't exactly the gaming occasion, nevertheless allows you to think about your gaming. And I'm not saying that the people who play Club Penguin are going to get all reflective about their mini games, but I am saying that it is something that um, keeps people going, keeps them interested in the game, um, and creates a kind of nice structure that makes it uh, entertaining and something that thereby, through the entertainment, can transmit values. Uh, the values that go along here, although they might be a little bit questionable, with the love between Ares and Aphrodite. Um, and so you can play, right? And this gets us to that fundamental distinction between Plato and Aristotle. What happens when you pretend to be bad? Well, I think the Odyssey bards would agree with Aristotle. You have fun. Um, and maybe you kind of explore what it's like to be a different kind of person. And that's fundamental to the idea that games are something that can help us, that they can be as constructive as Epic obviously was. And remember, of course, that Plato wants to throw Homer out entirely. Um, so when we talk about the value of a mini game like Ares and Aphrodite, or the value of a mini game like Jetpack, uh, or any of the other uh, games in Club Penguin, we're getting kind of much deeper into philosophy than we think we are, at least at the outset.